All right. Good morning, afternoon, midday, y'all. Um, so you watched the video on the different types of sauces other than like the traditional French style. There's so many, it's ridiculous. Um, every country, every culture I've ever, every country I've been to and every type of culture I've met or inter <clears throat> interacted with, they all have different types of sauces. And some sauces, like even Italian people, one person will tell you what pasta is, or what a uh, tomato sauce is or what marinara is supposed to be. They're all different, okay? Um, like the French style tomato sauce for their tomato is nothing like some of the Southern Italian style tomato sauces. So with that, I'm gonna keep going with sauces because I think it's very important and it kind of interacts with what we're doing this week. <clears throat> so let me move this. I keep saying so, my apologies. You guys saw the first part of the video. Now we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna show you some of the mother sauces um, just to kind of keep that, so you guys can kind of do a compare and contrast. Um, and these haven't been around for millions of years, okay? I would say most of these traditional sauces um, have only been around maybe over a couple hundred years, some of these French style, because of the way they cook these, you know, a lot of this product wasn't even available um, <clears throat> to the masses. But a lot of the more like soy sauce, um, pesto, those kind of things, those have been around a lot longer because if you think about, you know, people have had mortar and pestle for a long time, you know, the, the, the bowl with the stick, um, and they would just grab stuff to season their food. So they would grab things that are local, mash them up, put it on top. That's a traditional sauce. Okay, so traditional mother sauces, um, you have your bechamel, espanol, hollandaise, velouté, and tomato sauce. I wanna click on this, this is a pretty neat, um, this is just a web page, but it kind of gives you some ideas. So your velutes are your white stocks that are thickened. So like unroasted, uncooked bones, uncooked vegetables simmered with water, you know, or, you know, a, a wash stock. <clears throat> and then you thicken it. So that's like your light chicken gravy. Um, hollandaise is clarified butter and egg yolks and whatever else you want to add to it. You know, that's where you get the mother sauce and then you build on it. So there's Bernays, then there's just, oh God, I can't even get into the, all, all the amounts. So you can, then it's a combination. So you can take your hollandaise and put, you know, a little tomato sauce in it or pico de gallo or something. And then you do like a different style of hollandaise sauce. Bechamel, which is up here, milk, flour, butter. The bechamel, we are sort of making a bechamel tomorrow. I'm going to show you in another video with our mac and cheese. We're not making roux which is a traditional mixture of oil or fat and flour, um, <clears throat> which by the way, I think the video said that's 60% um, fat and 40% flour. I've always done 50-50. I was trained 35, 40 years ago to do 50-50. I don't know who switched it. Um, but we are because we're using heavy cream, which is thicker than milk, and there's flour in your pasta that's gonna add to your actual sauce. Espanol, which is basic brown stock thickened with roux, um, which I've always had Espanol where it's got tomato in it. Okay, so that's, that's the difference. And classic tomato sauce. And this says tomato sauce with roux. I've never used roux for tomato sauce. This is from the Spruce, this is a magazine. Um, so let's go through down here. So bechamel sauce, simpler the sauces. Um, this is easy, you melt butter. You add your measured out flour to it. You stir that together until it makes like, it almost looks like a paste. Um, and then it has like a nutty smell to it. You add your milk to that and then stir vigorously. Um, typically when I was in school, they make us put an onion glute, which is like an onion then a bay leaf and then two, um, uh, what's the word? I can't even think right now. Sorry, onion, bay leaf, and two cloves, and you'd stud it in there, and you'd put that in there. So the sauce had like a very predominant flavor. And then you can use it for anything you want. This is a thickened cream sauce. So you can add cheese to it. These are different variations. So it's cream sauce. Soubise is like sauteed mushroom or sauteed onions and added with the cream. Um, Mornay is when basically what you think of with um, like Alfredo is kind of like Mornay. It's Mornay sauce typically. Mornay is, has a I want to say Gruyere cheese added to it. So it's like a cream sauce with cheese added to it. 
um, cheddar cheese sauce, which we're making tomorrow, mustard sauce, cheesy sauce. Mustard sauce, you add mustard. So any, anytime you add something, you change the sauce. Velouté, like I said, another thickened stock with, um, with a thickened stock with roux. And then you, you fortify, you can add different things to this. So if you saute mushrooms, um, onions, garlic, thyme, and then you just add your, um, add your velouté to it, then you change, you have a whole new sauce. Um, I wonder if that one is in here. So this is just called mushroom. There's one called forestier sauce, which I'd like for you guys to make, but this is, see how this turns out? So it's like a thickened chicken stock, um, seasoned sauteed mushrooms, and you just serve it with the chicken. Okay. Forced air sauce is sauteed mushrooms and you add tarragon to it. Um, typically a little white wine, but we can't do that. But that's what it is. Um, Espanol, you know, thickened by with brown, thickens brown stock with roux. So brown stock, remember, is what we're going to make this week. Roasted bones. You roast the bones first. That makes a brown stock because the fond and the caramelization of the bones comes out and makes the sauce darker. Um, and then this says, deeper clear, da, 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 da. Espanol is traditionally further refined to produce a rich, deeply flavorful sauce called demi-glace, um, which is another step down. This used to be one of the mother sauces when I was in college, um, which, let's look in there. Oh. So yeah, this is uh, roasted bones and then tomato paste. So that's the demi. Typically it has red wine in it. Um, just depends on where you're at. Um, but char charcutier sauce, Lyonnaise sauce, Chaucer sauce, that's what that's a really good one too. Chaucer sauce is the butter, mushroom, shallot, white wine, demi-glaze, diced tomatoes. It's it's a very rich sauce. It's really good with beef, pork, whatever you want to use it for. Um, Hollandaise, we will try to make this. This is <clears throat> literally egg yolks that are cooked at a high or like over a double boiler so the steam actually cooks it. You don't want it super hot because you're going to scramble the eggs. Um, once those reach like a ribbon like state, which I'll have to show you this, you start, start adding your fat to it. So you add your clarified butter. Um, classic tomato sauce, you know, so there's different ones. This is Spanish sauce, Creole, Portuguese, depends on what country you're at. Okay, so that's what we have for those. Um, with this, I want to show you guys, there's a couple, and these are, these are the mother sauces. So these can go so many more directions than what this is. This is a, a recipe called chicken and cream sauce. If you've never heard of Jacques Papin, he is like one of the best chefs I've ever seen on TV. Like he makes this look real easy. He's probably, if you ever want to watch, he's on um, Create, so it's free. Um, but just go on YouTube. It's amazing. So we're going to watch this and we'll talk about it. Hi, I'm Jacques Pepin, and I'm cooking at home. So what I'm doing today is a chicken in vegetable and cream sauce. Yesterday, I had a Cornish hand that I roasted all like this, and my wife and I tend to like the leg more. So we ate the leg and the wing. So I have those two breasts here, and I'm going to do just like a chicken pot pie, except they, I'm not going to put the dough on top of it. So we started with the carrot. The carrot should cook first for like two, three minutes. I have a piece of onion here that will go into it. Also, we used to do that at Howard Johnson. I remember I would have tiny boiled onion, but I don't have it, so I onion this way. I have one mushroom that I find in my refrigerator, so I'm going to use it too. Here, yeah. Okay, so that's all of the garnish. And I have some frozen peas here, defrosting. I will thicken the sauce here with a little bit of corn, uh, potato starch, actually. Potato starch is better than corn starch. Corn starch tends to be too gooey. Conventionally, you melt butter, you add uh, uh, flour to it, and you do a roux to do the stock. Here I'm going in a simpler way. One teaspoon of that starch here and about a tablespoon of water with, uh, yeah, that's it. That would be enough to thicken this. So what he's doing, and they call it a slurry. <clears throat> this is a very typical 
So like corn starch and water, potato starch and water, rice starch and water, arrowroot and water. Now my carrot have been cooked. So let me add this. You could, if you want to use chicken stock instead of water, or put a little bit of uh, you know, chicken paste here to make a stock. I have salt in there. This is ready. This, so my chicken, here I'm going to take the skin out of it. The bone. Yeah, we tend at the house to use the dark meat we like better. This is not a leftover dish. The word leftover often has bad connotation. People say it's leftover, no. Often because you have that type of chicken, if you want to reheat it to serve it the same way you did it before, it probably won't work, won't be as good. But if you do something else with it, as I said, Howard Johnson, we used to cook the breast of chicken and uh, Add them to the sauce. So here I put that into large pieces like this. Okay, here, here, here. I think I'm going to add the peas in there and probably my, remember I had a cup of water but that cup of water by the time it boils for a couple of minutes now is probably reduced to like three quarter of a cup. Let me see the carrot. Mm. Nice and crunchy, but cooked enough. So I have the starch, it's always diluted with water or any type of liquid, wine or whatever. And the beauty of that potato starch, it thickens on contact. As soon as I put it in there, it thickens. We know exactly where you stand. So you could have more than that. You pour whatever you want and stir it and see how thick it gets. Stir the rest of it. A quarter of a cup of... Uh, cream here, maybe not even, like three tablespoons. And that's what I'm going to do for my cream sauce. As you can see here, beautiful cream sauce. My chicken, bring that to a boil in there. I'm going to put some pepper here. Dash of salt. And basically that's it. I warm up my chicken. And I have it there. You know, the interesting part is that people say, oh my God, oh, that cream is rich. Actually, no. I'm not going to tell you that it's a low calorie dish, but I have no butter. I have no oil. One tablespoon of oil is 130 calories. I had like three or four tablespoons of cream here. 50 calories each, so it's 200 calories. The rest is water, mm -hmm. carrot, the thing. So it's maybe 300 calories at the most for two people. So it's about the the... the the amount of what you have with two cookies. So this is it. And here, as you can see here, I have two portion here. You can have a little bit of rice with it or whatever. Beautiful dish done with leftover, but it is not leftover food. This is the chicken in cream and vegetable. Happy cooking. So <clears throat> you see how easy that was? Um, you can do cream sauces if you want them thicker. The one you guys are gonna do with your uh, pasta tomorrow is just heavy cream. And it's gonna get thick because of the reduction and the starch from the pasta macaroni and the cheese. The cheese is also gonna help thicken it. So that's just a quick, easy cream sauce. And this guy, that was an easy one. He's probably one of the best, most world-renowned chefs too. Um, but this is like in his house, you know, using leftovers, so. Okay, um, what's the next one we got? So this last one is making seafood, he calls it seafood deliciousness. So using the grand, the grand sauce of Espanol, um, I want you guys to see this. This is pretty amazing how this is done. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stefan and this is the French Cooking Academy. So if you were here last week, we've learned how to make the famous brown stock using the Escoffier method. And as I said, brown stock is the base of many sauces. Today's exercise is gonna consist of transforming that brown stock into a sauce and not any sauce. We're gonna transform that brown stock into the famous sauce Espanol. So if you want to learn the origin of the sauce and how to make the Espanol, stay tuned. All right, so let's have a look at this 
sauce espagnol or espagnol sauce first the translation in French it means the Spanish sauce huh? a few facts about that sauce it is one of the five mother sauce uh, in France we call them in France actually the great sauces why are they called like that because they were deemed to be the basis of all sauces so you could use that sauce on its own or you could use it actually to build upon add other ingredients and transform it into another sauce and the same as the bechamel in terms of history the uh, king of France, Louis XIV, decided to marry uh, with Marie-Thérèse from Spain, uh, which was the daughter of the king of Spain at the time. And Marie-Thérèse had to move from Spain with all of her stuff, and she moved to the palace in Versailles. But when she arrived there, she didn't arrive on her own. Uh, she had all the servants, uh, the cook, the furniture, and even some produce like oranges and chocolate that were never seen before. And in terms of the sauce, what happened is very simple, uh, is that in the court of Louis XIV, they were eating okay. the chef that was a Spanish guy, because flavoring doesn't come on its own. Okay. In detail just <laughs> now, to going. enhance the flavor and create a really an all-rounder of a sauce. Now, to transform a stock into a sauce, like I always said, you need flavors because flavoring doesn't come on its own. So as you can see here, this is what's going to transform our stock into a sauce. Huh? So we've got some mushroom, garlic, onion, some tomato. I'm going to use tomato paste as well, some carrots, parsley. We're going to usually uh, use the stalks, flour and butter to make a roux, and most importantly, some nice smoky bacon. <laughs> Before we start cooking, as always, we have to prepare the mise en place, huh, the food preparation in English. And this is what I've made. Always prepare your mise en place before you do anything that's going to make your life much easier. I've got a mirepoix of carrot and onion, some mushroom trimmings that I've prepared, the bacon is diced, the uh, garlic clove, I've got one here with the germ remover. And the, the reason we remove the germ is because otherwise the germ is bitter. It could bring a bitter taste in your preparation. So always remove the germ if there is one. I've uh, weighed my butter and flour and I've made my bouquet garni. Again, parsley stock, thyme, fresh thyme and one or two bay leaf maximum. If you don't have the fresh stuff, you can use just bay leaf and dry thyme. That will work as well. Tomato paste and some tomato. Now we're all ready to start our sauce. And now to the stove and let's start that sauce espanol. So as you can see this is my setup again. I've got three cups of brown stock, that's the Escoffier stock from last time that I've frozen and I've reheated it simmering gently. And make sure you remove all the Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I don't know what I just did there. So the seafood deliciousness, I don't know why I named it this. <clears throat> I, this is the beginning of this, but he makes this sauce first and he makes the seafood one tomorrow. But we'll continue on with that tomorrow. Sorry, I don't know what I just touched, but here we go. I'm going to play it from there. So inviting, like, oh, man. So anyway, when there's a bit of um, light coloration on there, you take all of your flour and you pour it over because we are going to be making a roux. That's right. So mix everything well, and we're going to leave this to cook a little bit. Today we want to make a brown roux. So you put your heat on low to make sure it doesn't burn. And we're going to leave this to cook until it colors again, slightly. As soon as your roux is starting to get a bit of a brownish color like that, you're going to add the tomato paste and we're going to cook it for a few minutes to remove the acidity. Now when it comes to the roux, guys, if you're not sure on how to make it, I've got a video on that. And so make sure to check it, I'll put a link in the video description on how to make the white blonde and brown roux. How simple was that? Now we've made the base of the Espanol, which is simply uh, a tomato base roux uh, with, with a mere pot of carrots and onions. As you can see, there's just all the, the mix of vegetable. The flour has been roasted, so think roasted flavor. And uh, we've got that brown color from the roux to make sure it goes with the brown sauce. And we keep the, the color coding in French cooking, brown with brown, white with white, depending on what kind of sauce you're making. Next step, we're gonna have to leave this to cool down totally until we can pour the boiling stock into there and start our sauce. While the roux is cooling down, I'm taking the opportunity to show you a little something. Uh, the recipe calls for chopped tomatoes. Huh? So anything French cooking, any French recipe, uh, the, for the proper one, professional one, if they, say, if they call for chopped tomatoes, it's usually without the skin. So here I've got some tomatoes that are uh, less than good looking. And they're pretty, pretty bad. So we're going to just blanch them in, in boiling water for a few minutes 
to remove the skin. So there's a small technique that I'm sure a lot of you already knows and we're not reinventing the wheel but I thought I'd show for the people that don't know. So you take your tomato, there's two steps. First you have to remove uh, the pedoncule, uh, the, the bottom here, the base, with your knife. Uh, so you remove this, get that hole and then you do a little cross on there. Once your tomatoes are ready, take each one and you plunge them in a pot of boiling water for about 10 to 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, you take your tomato out and you plunge it in the icy water. The thermal shock that's going to happen with the cold and the hot is going to basically start to detach all of the skin so that it can be peeled off very easily. And that's the trick. Just to show you a little example, once they're done, look, the skin goes off and with your hand, you can just remove the whole skin and discard it. That's how we skin tomatoes. Finally, once our uh, roux here is cold, we can pour our stock in there. Huh? So you take the boiling stock that we're going to filter over. So there's three cups of brown stock and this is the stock we've made last week. Huh? Remember it was frozen. And I didn't uh, mention guys but this version of the Espanol sauce is the version being taught in French culinary school which is not the pure Escoffier version just to let you know. Huh? So it's based on the Escoffier style but it's been adapted to take less time. Hmm? So once you pour this in the roux you're gonna put your heat on on high and bring that to the boil. Mm, look at that color. Pretty good. So once uh, the boil is back you're going to take all of the tomatoes, the bouquet garni uh, in there, the two garlic cloves that we had earlier and the mushroom trimmings and mix everything and we're going to leave that sauce to cook on a simmer for one and a half to two hours and as you can see really the color is nice and tomatoey but what we want is to really get the taste of the stock again concentrated with the flavoring of all these additional uh, aromatics. Now remember you don't put any salt or pepper in such sauces, it's only at the end that you will add the seasoning. This is because every ingredient like the bacon's got salt, you know the cow's got some sweetness, the mushroom brings something, so let the vegetables express themselves first and at the end only then you do the seasoning. So now we leave the sauce on a simmer and we're gonna leave it to cook and reduce for one and a half to two hours with a lid partially on so we can give it the final touch. For the filtering, same as before, fine mesh sieve and you pass everything through. Once your espanol has been transferred, the final touch is a nudge of butter in there and you're gonna slowly incorporate it. So I've put the heat back on uh, and this is basically your espanol being done. Now, when it's all done, the final of the final touch is to correct the seasoning and I will add a little bit of black pepper and I've a little bit of salt because I've just tasted it and it was lacking a little bit of salt but not beef uh, or add might not be added. okay <clears throat> so that is the hold on I want to show you this one let me mute it that's the sauce espanol um, the finishing liaison this is the the one that was supposed to start with um, this is taking that same sauce and adding um, seafood to it. But, so what he made there was the sauce espanol and you saw how creamy and rich that looked. Um, the final part where he added the butter is called the final liaison, which could be cream, it could be butter, sometimes it's egg, depends on what you're using. Um, it's something to add richness and some fat to it to make it fat. So, that's where I want you guys to stop. We're gonna finish this one with the seafood, with this, uh, Sauce uh, American, uh, the mother of all seafood, seafood sauces. We'll watch that tomorrow um, and we'll go into a couple more sauces. All right. So that's where I want you guys. This is going to be labeled um, <clears throat> probably chapter 17, L1, no, number two, day two, um, French sauces. Okay. So, well, well, probably mother sauces. But Hope you got something out of it, but I want to spend a lot of time on sauces because they really help enhance flavor. And then if you guys do ever go work in the culinary world, sauces are a huge, huge thing. I've, I've had a job where all I did was make sauce. So I was just saucier for a place. So it's a very important job and it's, it's pretty fun to do. All right, so I will see you all later.